Burak. Merhaba arkadaşlar, hepiniz IFT Talks webinarlarına hoş geldiniz. Bugün Kanada'nın en büyük üçüncü üniversitesi York Üniversitesi'de lisans, sertifika ve İngilizce programlarını Başar ve Rachel'dan dinliyor olacağız. Lütfen sorularınızı questions kısmından sormayı unutmayın. Yes Rachel, the stage is yours now. Thank you so much. So, uh, thank you so much. In Canada's, In Canada's most diverse, most diverse city, city, one of the country's, of the largest, country's universities largest universities is driving positive, is driving change, positive change, to change to write the future. York University, York University is a connected is a community connect working together to tackle world issues and prepare students for long-term success. We are a network of campuses in Toronto and around the world, offering a broad range of academic and experiential opportunities. At the global level, the Times Higher Education consistently places us highly in their impact rankings, which measures our contributions towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. In fact, York has launched Canada's first UN training center. We also conduct leading research in visual neuroscience, climate change, pandemic response, and more. At our campuses, students can choose the path that best meets their interests and future goals and interact with professors who are amongst the top 2% of researchers in the world. We boast renowned professional schools and leading faculties, including our new Faculty of Environmental and Urban Change. We also have Canada's largest liberal arts faculty and one of North America's premier schools of the arts, media, performance and design. What's more, York ranks among the top 10 universities in Canada for psychology, business and education programs. Students at York can gain real-world experience through thousands of internship, placement and co-op opportunities. And upon graduation, our students enjoy an exceptionally high employment rate. York is also proud to welcome students into a supportive, inclusive environment that strives to enhance their lives on many levels. The York experience doesn't end at graduation. Our alumni network consists of incredible people making a difference and includes politicians, scientists, and other change makers who have achieved national and global success. Join us at York University to create positive change and write the future. Can everyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Rachel. Yeah, wonderful. Just checking before I uh, start the presentation. All right. So um, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome and thank you for attending the York University and School of Continuing Studies webinar today. Um, my name is Rachel Law. I'm an international recruitment officer representing York University. I'm here today with my wonderful colleague, Bazaar from our School of um, Continuing Studies. Um, we hope everything is going well with you and your family. Uh, we are super excited to connect with you virtually and and, and we're looking forward to uh, sharing everything about uh, studying in Toronto and your university. Um, so moving to another country to pursue a higher education is an exciting and rewarding journey. So you are going to get really great academic experience, but it's all other things you do as well that shape your university years. So your university is located in the vibrant city of Toronto, the capital of Ontario. It's the largest cities in Canada with a population of 2.8 million. So it's one of the most multicultural cities in the world because over half of the population was born outside Canada and there are close to 200 languages being spoken here. So you will find a collection of neighborhoods throughout the cities that reflects this and many things in Toronto are designed to meet the needs of people from all over the world. So things like Little India, Jaitan, and Chinatown that have dual language street signs and are written in both English and language other than French. There are so many cool things you can do here from culture festival, music concert, Toronto International Film Festival, to sports games and music concerts. And if you are a foodie, we also have over 8,000 restaurants from every culture background for you to explore. Um, Toronto is also ranked the second safest cities and number four most livable cities in the world. 
And Toronto's success is due in large part to strength and significant growth of its financial industry. So it is the second largest financial center in North America uh, after New York City. It's a really city lover stream here in the city of Toronto. And as mentioned before, your university is located um, in Toronto, just a subway right away from downtown Toronto, with two subway stations located right on the campus, as well as there's a network of transportation. You can just easily explore the city's diverse neighborhood, um, parks, sporting events, and, and concerts. Um, our Q campus is the largest campus. It is a self-contained community uh, with surrounding by nature, academic, athletic facilities. Um, there are residences and also a variety of student services and over 40 restaurants and shops. Our Glendon campus, located in Midtown Toronto, offers a very unique bilingual French and English degree options. So Glendon is also known for its beautiful campus and Rose Garden. Uh, they have a small class size and connection to the global Francophone community. And very exciting news, um, in 2023, York University will be opening our Markham Centre campus, which will be urban, connected, and integrated with local and global communities. And academic programs and research will revolve around the themes of technologies and entrepreneurship. So if you are a change maker who is determined to make a positive impact to the community and to your future, York University will be a great option for you. Um, York is a leading international teaching and research university and a driving force for our positive change. With a student population of 55,000, over 10,000 of them are international students coming from 178 countries. And there are over 300,000 accomplished alumni of Span the Grow making an impact in their fields. Just like the city of Toronto, it's a very diverse, inclusive and welcoming community. So you will get exposed to um, a lot of new ways of thinking, living and learning. So whether you are a creator, um, a critical thinker, a designer or an innovator, an activist, uh, there's always a meaningful place and program for you at York. And we are really excited to welcome your vision, your voice and your ideas into our community of change maker. So, uh, we'll look at how our 11 faculties are creating positive change and more importantly, how they might be the right fit for you uh, and your goals. So our faculties are leaders in their fields. Uh, they are really pushing the boundaries of uh, research and teaching while staying grounded in practical uh, real world application. So you'll be benefiting from engaging innovative programs that offer the flexible cross-disciplining programming um, the innovative courses design and also the diverse experiential um, education opportunities. So this, so creativity is your commodity. Um, so whether you are interested in uh, game design, digital media, film production, uh, screenwriting, or integrated arts, for those of you who are interested in a little bit of everything about arts, um, AMPD programs really embedded hands-on experience, such as internships in the film and media industry. Um, there is a required placement in professional design studio. Um, you can study abroad in Los Angeles or attend workshops with theater professionals. So regardless of uh, which program you choose, AMPD will really unleash your creativity and really prepare you to thrive in industry while forwarding your passion. So the Liberal Arts and Professional Studies is the largest faculty in Canada offering over 90 undergraduate degree programs, ranging from social science, political science, to business, economics, and information technology. So it really integrates uh, empathy through the liberal arts as a way to understand human beings and create solutions. So it will really leave you uh, with a comprehensive understanding um, of humanity. And also the degree flexibility will allow you to customize your degree to support your chosen career um, in here. So Faculty of Health um, is responding to global challenges uh, with teaching and research excellence to keep more people healthier and to live longer. So you can uh, study global health, health studies, kinesiology and health sciences. Uh, neuroscience is our new program, and also we have the largest psychology program uh, in Canada. So you will basically approach the study of health uh, holistically 
and we recognize how um, health is connected with the broader issue. So you'll be learning all aspects of health and the healthcare system and prepare students uh, for professional program as well as clinical and non-clinical uh, careers. Um, so in Canada, there's no direct entry to a medical school or pharma study, pharmacy studies. So this faculty offers a range of pre-medical programs to choose uh, for those of you who are who are interested in applying for medical school after you complete your undergraduate degree program. So Faculty of, of Environmental and Urban Change is our brand new faculty uh, launched in fall 2020, was created as a call to uh, action to respond to today's most pressing challenges facing people and the planet. So in this faculty, you will start in the classroom uh, with guest lectures, case studies, and lab work, and also take a few courses in locals ranging from the greater, greater Toronto areas to the Costa Rica rainforest campus that belongs to your university. Um, and there Thanks, are five- okay, Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, are you sharing your slides? Yes. Uh, because we cannot uh, see the slides. Could you please share it again? Yeah, sure. That's really weird. Can you see it? Did yeah, it no, just stop sharing? It. Thank you. Did it just stop sharing? I think, yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. I have no idea what happened. Um, so there are five programs available uh, in the EUC faculty. Uh, you can choose like cities, regions, planning, environmental, arts and justice, uh, environmental science, global geography, as well as sustainable environmental management. Uh, can you see the next slide? I just switched slides. Yes, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Because I, I, I wasn't able to see, but thank you. Um, so LaSalle School of Engineering. So anyone can have a great idea, but um, engineers and scientists are the people who turn those ideas into reality. Um, so LaSalle School of Engineering uh, believes it's not enough to imagine or advocate for a better future, um, and somebody has to build the idea. So LaSalle offers internationally uh, recognized engineering program with streams available in computer, uh, civil, uh, electrical, mechanical, software, um, as well as the only space engineering program in Canada. So the engineering program offers like a first common year, and then you'll be able to declare uh, a specialization uh, uh, to complete like an engineering degree. Um, and also the digital media program you will develop and use uh, choose to create engaging interactive uh, digital um, objects and also experiences including effects and animation, uh, 3D stimulation and the responsive interfaces bridging the physical and uh, virtual world. And the uh, there's a high demand in computer science and computer security um, that you can choose from a wide range of application areas, um, including uh, machine learning, uh, robotic uh, graphics, uh, user interface design, as well as data mining. So Faculty of Science, um, it's our scientific mindset, uh, includes four uh, areas, curiosity and open mind, um, skepticism and humility. So the skill set is valuable to employers and our Faculty of Science really teaches you to develop those skills uh, through their innovative programs and award-winning professors. Um, and in order to change the future, you must understand you know, your surroundings and the science affects everything uh, you do um, in the world. And it also illustrates uh, this uh, through experiences that are cl classroom focused. So you will have access to labs and field trips, and, and there's also community focus by practicing research projects um, or volunteering. Um, again, for those of you who are determined to go to a medical school after completing your undergraduate degree, uh, there are a variety of options available in biology, sciences uh, courses uh, through this faculty. And as mentioned before, Glendon is our smaller campus and is home to 2,700 students with an average class size of 26. Um, and the interesting fact is it is actually the first campus when your university was first established back in 1959. So you will have the opportunity to study, uh, live and work in the bilingual English and French environment. And potentially you can also add another language to your learning such as Spanish. Um, you can take business or economics or try social sciences uh, with history, 
um, or you can do social science uh, with communications or political science, um, as well as uh, there are few sciences program in biology or psychology. So your learning here will be highly personalized uh, with instructors and colleagues who know you by your name. And, and it's a campus that's quickly familiar with friendly faces and the opportunity to practice your language skill as well. So for most programs, students do not need to know uh, French to get into majority of the program. However, in order to graduate, you, know, you have to gain certain level of proficiency in French. Um, and no matter which program you take on either campus, our students will have access to services and courses uh, available. Um, and there will be a free shuttle bus that helps you commute between the two campuses throughout the week. Um, so um, it's a great opportunity uh, to gain an international rights degree to make you more globally competitive. So Schulich School of Business is known as Canada's Global Business School. Um, it is ranked among the top business schools in Canada and offers a cutting edge uh, undergraduate business education that allows you to join your peers from day one uh, with direct program access. So your first two years will give you a strong foundation in business skills, and then you can specialize in year three and the fourth in one of the two of the 10 specializations. You can also customize uh, your degree uh, by taking like a few elective courses. Uh, you can uh, participate in an ex international exchange program or add a certificate in international management. Um, so th th there's a maximum class size between 25 and 55 students uh, for most courses that will really give you the opportunity to build networks and relationships. Um, it's just one of the skills you will develop uh, that are essential for um, business leaders. So at your university, you will have the ability and flexibility to do your degree your way. Uh, so what that means is uh, with most programs, you can do a double major or major minor uh, or combine two different areas of interest to create your own unique degree. Um, so for instance, you can do double majors in psychology and biology, uh, political science and humanity. You can also major in film production uh, with a business minor or specialize in community uh, commerce studies and take a few other electives in other areas. So it's quite flexible and possible to combine most of the program here. And you can literally study what you love and learn what you need. So how it works is like you can uh, start with one major in year one and then add another major or minor in year two. Um, and, it, and you can explore as many areas as possible uh, in your year one in an undecided major and declare your major in your year two. And also we have this like four plus one pathway program, a dual degree program is a brand new direct entry high school program that was launched in fall 2021. Uh, for those of you who have like broader interest but wish to gain business perspective, uh, you can complete a non-business undergraduate degree. And then you go straight to the master of management program in your fifth year at the top ranking school of business. So we know how important your career launch is. So at York, uh, we offer many, many ways to experience your education uh, outside the classroom. So we have various co-ops and internships available in several um, of our program. We also have a lot of industry partnerships, which you can alternate your academic terms uh, with a pay full-time uh, co-ops or internships. Um, and also there are thousands, uh, close to 2,000 on-campus jobs available throughout the year. And also the cross-campus capstone uh, classroom will give you an opportunity to work effectively um, in different teams across the program on the real world challenges uh, with social impact. Um, so furthermore, you will immerse yourself in a different culture and gain a competitive advantages by participating in an exchange program at one of our 280 exchange partner universities across the world. So York is one of the only three universities in Canada to offer a college system. Um, so York's college uh, will help you to make a big university feel small. So you will be admitted to a program that belongs to a faculty that is affiliated with a college, which will provide you a place uh, to study, um, attend social activities, and also to get academic help. So you can also join over 4,000 students living on campus uh, in a normal year pre-pandemic across our 10 student residences. Uh, you can uh, 
have like dedicated residents like teen support that creates a supported community experience with amazing opportunity to make friends from around the world. Um, so residence is guaranteed for first year students that are coming directly uh, from high school uh, who uh, meet the guarantee deadline of June 1st. Um, so it's also a great opportunity for you to explore your interests and get involved in over 300 clubs and association. Uh, you can cheer on the York U Lions on game days at night and stay active with our three dreams and 11,000 square footage facility, fitness facility. And if you are into sports games, uh, you will also have access and a lot of particip uh, opportunity to participate um, as a professional student athlete or you are just playing it for fun. So um, you can access your potential with your caring and inclusive student support services who will be your partners in student success. So we are all here to help you achieve your goals, uh, maximize your experience, and also to have a positive transition uh, to the university here at your university. And your international office is your second home um, in Canada. Um, so it is the dedicated uh, international student office that will offer you peer mentor support. Um, and for those of you who need uh, help in applying for study permit, entry visa, or eventually if you intend to stay in Canada to work and to transition to become a permanent resident, we have the dedicated uh, licensed professional to support your journey. And also there are numbers of financial support available to international students via this office as well. So we highly encourage you to uh, take advantage of all the resources and services available uh, at your international. So I'm moving on to uh, talk about your next steps um, at your university. So, um, you know, um, in terms of, about the admissions requirements. So applying for your university, the admissions requirement will really depend on the curriculum and the program that you are applying for. So I would really encourage you to uh, go through our program of study website um, and check the admissions requirement uh, for your particular high school curriculum. And also it's important to check all the application deadline um, and for high school students who are applying Applying, if we normally require high school grades. And for those of you who are still in the progress of completing your high school, you can submit your mid-year grades. And for those of you who are attending GCE or IB curriculum, we are normally asking for your predicted grades of A-level as well as your IB predicted grades. And also um, at your university, ACT, SD, ATs are not required uh, um, if you're attending high school outside the United States. Uh, also, we're not asking for SAT, uh, sorry, we're not asking for essays, a letter of a recommendation. Um, and however, there are some programs uh, that require special documentation. So if you're considering the BBA, IBBA uh, through Schulich School of Business, or if you are applying for any of the fine arts program um, at AMPD department, there is a um, additional supplementary evaluation in addition to your academic performance. Um, and also English proficiency uh, requirement might be applied to you depending on your study history. Uh, so I would encourage you to check our um, website for detailed information. So currently we are accepting IELTS, uh, TOEFL, um, and also if you are attending a yearly pathway program, uh, that will also uh, satisfy our English proficiency requirement as well. And my colleague Barsa will go into more details um, about the yearly pathway program. And normally for those of you who have uh, spent at least four more years in a high school where the medium of instruction is in English, uh, usually this requirement may be waived. So in overall, um, we are very uh, focusing on your academic performance, and it is one of the most important factors to be considered for admissions at your university. Um, and really quickly, um, transfer credit. So your university is a credit-based university, so that means a student will need 120 credits to graduate, and normally it takes about four years to complete your degree. Um, so for certain students, if you're a university college transfer student, or if you're doing an advanced secondary um, uh, diploma, such as IB, if you're taking AP subject or you're doing GCE curriculum, you might be eligible to receive transfer credit uh, depending on the course and the exam results that you achieve. So detailed information uh, will be available after you have been uh, admitted to your university and when your official results are submitted to your. 
Um, and we know how important the financial planning it is uh, for you, especially if you are coming as an international student. So this is just an estimated fee uh, for the fall 2021 to winter 2022. Um, so the dollar amount is listed in Canadian dollars. So when you compare to uh, the US dollars, uh, we are relatively uh, a lot cheaper. Um, so it's about 25% off compared to the US dollar amount. Um, so uh, the tuition fee estimate is based on one year and detailed information. I would encourage you to check our website for the specifics. So your university is also committed uh, to making higher education more accessible to international students. So we have a range of scholarships available to high achieving international students who also demonstrate strong student leadership and community involvement who are applying directly uh, from high school to the fall section. So we are current, uh, we have launched like a few uh, scholarships available uh, for the fall 2022. Uh, so we are currently in the progress of updating our website. So we are hoping to have this information available soon. Um, and I would highly encourage uh, those high achieving who also demonstrate strong student leadership profile to visit our website. Um, the application will be available in November 1st and there's an application deadline of February. First, um, if you would think you are, you will be a good fit uh, for any of those scholarship. So the um, application uh, for your university uh, is already open. So um, before you apply, I will highly encourage you to review the admissions requirement, uh, which are available in our program search website. Um, so there is two, there are two ways of applying for York. You can apply directly through the Ontario University Application Center 105 or you can apply directly through your university. So for those of you who are considering multiple university in the province of Ontario, uh, then I would encourage you to apply directly through the on web um, application website. Um, so a lot of you might be curious um, to find out um, what this university doing uh, throughout the whole pandemic. Um, so obviously community, uh, the community members health and safety are the university's top priority. Um, so for the fall term 2021 for the undergraduate program, the courses are currently offered both remote and in person. So with the accelerated vaccine rollout, the university is planning for a safe full return to campus um, in the winter term 2022. Um, so your university University is also paying for quarantine accommodation costs to incoming international students who require a place to uh, quarantine uh, when they first arrive. And rest assure you that uh, we are all here to provide support and support you throughout this journey and we are all in this together. Um, so if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to reach out to the international recruitment team and we are here to uh, support you. Uh, for your application, your admission, as, as well as your transition to the university. So that concludes my presentation. Um, so thank you. I will pass it over to my colleague. Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening uh, carefully and uh, attentively to this presentation. I know that you guys have a few questions that you've been putting in the chat box. So once we are completed or done with this uh, presentation part, uh, we will answer all the questions that you're putting into the chat box. So uh, my name is Bashar Ansari and I'm the recruitment manager for the English Language Institute at York University um, and the School of Continuing Studies, which offers the Language Institute programs as well as the postgraduate certificate programs. So I'm going to today talk to you a little bit more about the English Language Pathway programs. Um, I can see from the chat that we have a few students that are asking questions about master's programs. So uh, we do have a preparatory program um, for graduate studies as well, which I'll talk to you about in uh, the next few minutes. So first of all, I would like to play a small video for all of you, uh, which is about uh, if for an introduction about the York University English Language Institute. So I'm just going to share my screen with you guys and uh, I'll play this video for you guys. So enjoy the video and then I'll go through more details with you guys. The York University English Language Institute is one of the largest English language training centers in Canada and an integral part of York, Canada's third largest university. The Institute provides friendly, professional, high-quality English instruction for students of all levels, from those new to English to advanced learners.
All of our instructors have at least a master's or PhD and are supported by cutting edge technology in and out of the classroom. The average class size is about 16, so students get personalized attention from instructors as they improve and practice their English skills. The Institute is accredited by Languages Canada and has won numerous awards for excellence in English language teaching. The York University English Language Institute serves students from more than 50 countries every year, offering English language programs, academic programming, and extracurricular activities to help students learn English by immersing them in Canadian culture. To ensure the safety of our students and instructors during COVID-19, all programs are now delivered entirely online. We are leveraging our years of experience delivering high-quality online programs to maintain the same excellent educational experience of our in-class courses. Students learn online in a live classroom environment with their peers, as expert instructors guide them through the course material. The program also includes one hour online of self-study modules where students can hone their skills on their own time. Our extracurricular and social activities are delivered online via Zoom and other digital platforms, keeping students connected to their community of peers without putting themselves at risk. The programs offered by the York University English Language Institute are open for admission year-round. You can talk to us, learn more about our programs, or easily apply on our website at yorku.ca slash continue. My job is to... Okay, thank you everyone for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoyed this introductory video. Um, I will now go take you through this presentation that I have um, about the English Language Institute. And um, I'm also mindful of the time, so I'm going to try and um, spend only a few minutes uh, giving you uh, sort of an overview of some of the important programs that we offer here at York University. So um, just to give you an overview, first of all, um, at the English Language Institute, we have programs for students at all level. You could be an absolute beginner or you could be someone at the advanced level uh, and we have the right program to suit your needs. Uh, we have programs that are suitable for undergraduate students. We have programs that are also suitable for graduate students. And we also have short term immersion programs for high school or university students just looking to come here for a short term period, uh, let's say in the summer or the spring, um, just to immerse and um, uh, maybe improve on their English language skills. So um, I, there is something I'd like to mention to you um, in terms of students taking up the English language pathway programs and then going into York University for an undergraduate degree. There is something called the ULE effect, which is basically uh, students that come into an, uh, a pathway program at the English Language Institute and then progress on to an undergraduate degree at York University seem to have a better GPA, they have a better retention rate, and they have a better graduation rate. So this is sort of an attestation of the fact that um, the skills that you learn while being a student here at the English Language Institute is something that further helps you when you pursue your undergraduate degree. Now, um, as you've seen in the video, we talked about the online learning and our programs being online. I'm glad to inform you that um, we have also started offering um, some classes on campus uh, from the January intake onwards. So students that will be applying for programs in the future will have the option to either study online um, from their home country or come to campus and then um, do in-person classes as well. So it's entirely up to the student and their parents to decide if you're vaccinated, if you think the rest of the things are okay. Uh, you get your study permit, you're more than welcome to come to Canada and start off your courses at York University. Now, um, our entry requirement, and I'm right now I'm talking only about the undergraduate programs. I'm not talking about the postgraduate master's programs. Our entry requirement, let's say for Duolingo, is 115 for direct entry. So let's say you are a student looking to do a bachelor degree at York and you have a 100 score or 105 or 110, anything less than 115, um, you will still be able to apply for admission to York University for conditional acceptance. So what's going to happen is if you meet the academic entry requirements, meaning your GPA in high school and stuff is fine, it's just your language score that is low, we will be able to accept you conditionally. And um, this conditional offer comes with, we have uh, three programs that you can get a conditional offer with, which I'll talk to you about in the next slides. Uh, usually based on your language score, 
we will be able to advise you about the most appropriate program option for you. So for example, if you get a conditional offer, your IELTS score or your Duolingo score, let's say is 100, um, you reach out to us and say, what is the program suitable for me? Our school and our advisors will then be able to tell you which program is the best suited program for you uh, with condition acceptance into undergraduate. So let's uh, quickly sum up some of our English language programs. The academic program is, of course, one of the most popular programs we offer. Uh, we have nine levels in the academic program, starting from level one to level nine, level nine being the highest level. Um, you can still get conditional acceptance with an undergraduate degree along with the AP program, uh, but it's after level five only. So, for example, if your language proficiency skills are really low or really weak, and you're anything below level five, then you can't get conditional acceptance along with the bachelors. You have to be at least at an AP level five or above. Um, for the academic program, there are no specific requirements. You just need to be 18 years of age. Um, and you know you can apply for the academic English program. Um, you know um, There's no academic requirements, no specific language requirements. And if you haven't done IELTS or you haven't done any other language test, we also have a placement test that we can do for the students to determine uh, their current language skills. And then based on that result of that test, we will tell you which level you can start from. Uh, now, I will talk to you about the three undergraduate pathway programs that give you conditional offer with the undergraduate degree. So the first one is our YU Bridge program. This is a great program for students that are looking to get university credits along with their English language studies. Um, you are able to do one three credit course in your first term and you could take up to two three credit courses in your second term meaning that you're looking at uh, perhaps completing up to nine credits in an eight month pathway program which is the why you bridge program um, this program like i said gives you conditional acceptance into your degrees so if you would like to study some academic courses along with improving your english language this could be a really good program for you to look at. Uh, for the YU Bridge program, the IELTS requirement is 6.0. So again, to give you a small example, the overall, uh, the entry requirement for bachelor degrees, direct entry is 6.5 that the um, undergraduate team requires for, for international students. If you don't have a 6.5, you have a 6.0 in IELTS, for example, then you can come into our YU Bridge program. Uh, sorry, you can come in with a score of as low as 5.0 in the YU Bridge program, and it's an eight months program, and you get conditional acceptance along with uh, your uh, you know, offer letter for your bachelor degree. I'm not going to go into detail with this right now because I don't want to confuse you. Uh, in short, we have the YU Bridge program is a pathway program, which is eight months normally. If you have an IELTS score of six, then you can go directly into the second semester or term two, which means you just have to do the four month program rather than the full eight months program. The next program uh, that you can get conditional acceptance with at York University is the Destination York program. Uh, to keep things simple, um, again, if you have a 6.0 IELTS and you need a 6.5 for bachelors, this is an eight weeks program that you can come into. And upon completion of the eight weeks program, you will meet the requirements for the bachelor degree, the language proficiency requiring requirements. You would not need to do any IELTS or any other test at the end of this uh, particular program. So basically by completing the program, you meet the language requirements and you start off your bachelor's degree. Now, um, the next program that also gives you conditional offer acceptance with the undergraduate program is the predestination York program. So predestination is literally like the smaller brother of the destination York program. Uh, this program is designed for students that have a 5.5 IELTS minimum. So again, if the requirement is 6.5, you have a 5.5 score. You will first come into the predestination York program, do eight weeks. After that, you will uh, start the Destination New York program, do another eight weeks. And uh, that way, once you've completed both Predestination New York and Destination New York, you will reach the 6.5 uh, level and you'll be able to start your undergraduate degree. Now, for all of the graduate students here today um, that have been asking questions about master's program, please be mindful that master's admissions in Canada, um, you know, at York or other universities as well, they're very competitive. 
So first of all, you're looking at a GPA of at least around, let's say, a, a 3.2 or a B average out of a four um, to be able to apply for, for the master's programs. Um, also, in terms of the English language requirements, usually you will need at least an IELTS of 6.5 or above. Now, if you don't have that, then um, and you think you're going to have a lower English score and you might need some preparation before getting into master's, then you can explore coming into our graduate study preparation program. This is a great program because in this program, you won't just improve your English language. In fact, we will also help you prepare for IELTS, for GRE, GMAT, which are like the preparation um, uh, courses or exams that you require for postgraduate studies or master's studies in, in some subject areas. We also have a streamlined admission process with certain North American universities, um, meaning that our program managers will be able to help you apply to different uh, graduate schools in Canada. It could be York University, it could be another university, it could be a college. Depending on whatever your aims are, our program managers will be able to help you apply to different institutions once you're in this program. This is an eight months program, uh, two semesters. With this program, however, you do not get a conditional offer for the graduate school. So if you're looking at getting a conditional offer from York University, that is not possible. You will first come into this program. And then once you're in the program, you will get help from the program manager to apply for different uh, programs in different universities. Uh, for students to come into this program, you need at least an IELTS score of 5.5. By the time you complete this program, your English proficiency would be around the 6.5, 7.5 or 7 level, depending on uh, what grade you've achieved in the program. OK, so um, just I'm just going to sum things up by showing you the slide. So as you can see, uh, um, the programs that give you a conditional offer for a bachelor degree are YU Bridge, Predestination York, Destination York, meaning if you have an IELTS score of as low as 5.0, you can still get an offer for a bachelor degree and you can come into one of our conditional programs where you get conditional offers um, for the undergraduate along with one of our language programs. So here's just a slide about the tuition fees. Again, I'm not going to go into detail with the tuition fees because um, you know this information is available publicly on the website. You're more than welcome to reach out to myself uh, if you need any further information about the English language programs. And I'll be more than happy to assist you and answer any questions that you guys have about the language programs. What I'm also going to do now is I'm going to put down my email address here in the chat box uh, just for you guys to take a note. So if you have any questions about the language programs, uh, you're welcome to reach out to me. Um, thank you, Rachel, for the really uh, great and detailed presentation uh, today. Uh, what we'll do next is uh, we'll just answer the questions that we have. I think some of them will be for Rachel, some for myself. So um, I'm just going to navigate through this and pass on the undergraduate questions to Rachel, and then I'll look after the other questions. So. Um, I have a question here from Erman. Um, how is your visa politic for Canada? Um, I, I think you might be referring to the visa policy for Canada. If that's the visa policy you're referring to, um, to my knowledge, Turkish students, um, I, I, you know, as long as you have met all the requirements and you're a genuine student, I don't really see much problems with you getting study permits. But that's not something that we can advise you about. Uh, as you know, the study permits are something that the Canadian High Commission processes. So we are not really able to uh, confirm or guarantee by any means that a student's going to get a study permit. So um, you need to apply and then, of course, uh, make sure that you're meeting all the requirements for the study permit before you're applying uh, to make your application successful. Yeah, and I just added the link uh, from Immigration Canada. So we highly encourage you to uh, check out the website um, for all the detailed requirements. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you for adding that. So the next question is from Yigit. Is a 3.0 GPA enough for marketing at Shulik or would it be 3.2? Bashar said something about it. I'm confused. So uh, you get basically me and Rachel, we both, Rachel works for the undergraduate team and then I work for the School of Continuing Studies. And then we have a separate department, the, which is called the Faculty of Graduate Studies. And then we have the Schulich School of Business that has their own separate team. Because we are such a large institution, the best thing for you to do is reach out to the relevant person at the Schulich School of Business um, 
for you to get precise information about their entry requirements. Um, from my knowledge, most of the master's programs at York University require at least a 3.2 or a, a GPA or a B average uh, for most of the programs. But again, it's worth you checking with the Schulich School of Business because we have so many programs and I know Schulich is more competitive. So maybe their requirements might even be higher than that. Uh, so it's best to check with them about that. Uh, today's um, today's event is more to do with the undergraduate programs and undergraduate pathways. And both of us, like we said, we do not represent the graduate study faculty. So we are not able to answer all of these questions about master's degrees. In Masters of Marketing at Shoe Lake page, it says proof of English proficiency if studies were not completed in English. What is it? So you get um, sometimes depending on and again, I'm not a Shoe Lake representative, but I'm just speaking with my own knowledge of what um, you know, um, I know about here at York. So if you've studied in a in a university that where the primary language um, of study or, or teaching was English, then in some cases you can sometimes get exemptions from um, doing an IELTS test. But again, it depends on the faculty, it depends on the school that you're applying to, it depends on uh, a few different factors. So for all of your questions about the Schulich School of Business programs, you should reach out to the person at Schulich School uh, for them to give you appropriate answers for all these questions. Uh, the next question is from Saida. If we cannot reach requested IELTS, can we take short term language course and get conditional letter for certificates? So say that that's a very good question uh, that the answer is yes, just like we can give you conditional offers for our bachelor degrees. We can also give you conditional offers for our postgraduate certificate programs. By the way, for our postgraduate certificates, the entry requirements, uh, the English language requirements are only 6.0 overall IELTS. So it's actually one step lower even than the undergraduate degrees because they're two separate schools. Um, and of course, our requirements are different to the requirements of the undergraduate studies. Uh, so let's say if you have a five band denial, or you have a 5.5 and the requirement for certificates is 6.0, that's not a problem. You need to indicate in your application or you need to contact us first and tell us that you're looking to get conditional acceptance for um, our certificate program. And we will then be able to give you two offer letters, one for the certificate, which is conditional, and then one offer letter for the English language programs. And uh, say either if you need us to con connect you with the local representative uh, who can support you with your application, we will be happy to do that too. Uh, so I have put down my email address in response to your question. Uh, feel free to leave me an email if you want uh, more information about the certificates or the agents or the partners that we work with in Turkey that can help you submit your application from Turkey. Um, the next question is from Recep. How do we find detailed information about the certificate programs? So uh, the postgraduate certificate programs, I, I'm sharing a link with you in the chat box uh, in response to your question. You will be able to see all the full time programs that we offer here uh, in this link. And then I am also going to put down my email address. If you have any questions about the certificate programs, feel free to just drop me an email and I will answer all of your questions. And again, Recep, we do have uh, official representatives based in, uh, you know, they have offices in all major cities. So Istanbul and, and the other cities too, Ankara and stuff. So if you need us to connect you with someone who can guide you about the process, uh, just reach out to me and send me an email and I'll be happy to connect you. Um, so Faiza is also asked about the one year, the work permit after the one year certificate program. So for this, I can confirm that you, yes, you will be able to get a postgraduate work permit because the, the certificate programs fall under the School of Continuing Studies, which is still uh, the faculty or the department that I work for. So yes, you do get work permit uh, after completion of the certificate. And our certificates are actually, uh, you know, they're really good value for money because even if you compare us with other institutions in the Toronto area, our tuition fees is actually lower and we are Canada's third largest university. So you still get to study at the Kiel campus. Your overall experience is really great while studying here. So, um, yes, I like I said, if you meet all the requirements, you will be able to get a postgraduate work permit upon completion. And again, uh, Faiza, if you have any further questions, feel free to just email me and I'm happy to answer any other questions you have. Uh, Tariq has asked, is any requirement about GPA for master's programs? So again, Tariq, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down the email address for my colleague, Aileen uh, Watson, 
and she's the recruitment officer for the School of Graduate Studies. So if you email her, she will be able to tell you more about master's programs and the requirements for master's programs. Um, sorry, just to clarify, so in the chat box, I've put like two contact information. So one is for the non-business degree related graduate program, contact Eileen. And then if you are interested in any of the business related program through Shirley School of Business, uh, there, there's another contact. So it's in the chat box. Uh, please make sure you, you refer to the contact and, and email them accordingly. Thank you very much, Rachel. Rachel. Uh, so yeah, it's great you mentioned on upon that. Uh, so yeah, please, guys, like Rachel said, uh, there are two separate contexts. So if it's the Schulich School of Business, please contact the other person. And then if it's any other programs, please contact Aileen Watson. Uh, so Yigit is asking, what is PG work permit? Can I work while I'm studying masters at York? What is it about? So um, basically, a postgraduate work permit is usually uh, a work permit we are referring to for students that once you complete uh, an academic program in Canada that meets certain requirements in terms of being a full time program and a certain duration program, uh, you are eligible to get a work permit upon completion of your studies after you've completed your degree successfully. So that is the work permit we are referring to. That is usually the duration of the work permit is up to the discretion of the visa officer. It's tied up usually to the duration of your program. For example, if you do a one year certificate, you could get a one year um, work permit. If you could do a two year master's, you could get a two or three year work permit. It all depends. Um, and while you're studying as an international student in Canada, you're also eligible to work part time. So that's 20 hours a week. Again, um, my colleague Rachel has put down a link for you. Um, so please check out the link and you'll be able to see more detailed information here uh, about the uh, permissions to to work here and the postgraduate work permit. So Tariq, I guess your question has already been answered by uh, by Rachel. She's put down some information here for you. Again, because it's master's program, um, you know, you need to contact Aileen Watson if you need to find out more um, or the people at the faculty of uh, the Shuri School of Business. Yeah, and also um, I'm going to share a link about future events. I believe uh, Aileen will be running some grad session as well. So please do sign up for the session as well. So I'm going to do that in a moment. Wonderful. And also all of the students here, including Tariq, I know that a lot of you are inquiring about master's programs, but um, keep in mind that there are specific requirements which are uh, higher, um, you know, in terms of if you compare them with admission into postgraduate certificates, getting into a master's is, of course, more tough and the requirements are higher. Um, the postgraduate certificates are also quite a good alternative option for students because with the postgraduate certificates, we can accept students with a GPA uh, with a, well, a percentage of as low as 60% out of 100% uh, marks overall. So, uh, for example, if for masters we need a 3.2, we might be able to accept you if your GPA, let's say, is a 2.8 in a bachelor's degree into a certificate program. So if you want to find out more about certificates specifically, um, I'm also going to be holding another um, session with IEFT on the 4th of October, which is specifically about postgraduate certificates at York University. So for all of you that are um, looking for more information about the postgraduate certificates, please do make sure you attend this session on the 4th of October uh, with us and we'll provide you more information about uh, the postgraduate certificates. Uh, okay, so we have another one about master's requirements and um, my colleagues put down the details of Aileen. So yeah, that's that. Um, if you graduate from any program, do we have postgraduate work permit? So yeah, Murat, I've already answered this question. As an international student, you can get a work permit. Uh, we, unfortunately, I cannot comment about the wife's work permit. Uh, I'm not qualified to provide immigration advice, so it's best you check on the immigration website. Um, and then we have a question from Sirin. Again, it's to do with a master's program. So unfortunately, I cannot help you with this. Um, please contact Aileen Watson at the Faculty of Graduate Studies, and she'll be able to help you further with this. Is there an aviation program? Um, so I see that Rachel's already answered this as well. So we don't have an, uh, a program in um, aviation, but we have space engineering, if you're interested. Um, Masters of Marketing at Schulich. So again, um, thank you, Rachel, for answering all of these questions. Um, do we um, need to be? 
Yeah. Sorry to interrupt, Marsha. I think there's a quite important question for you. Um, it's about the language program. Like, is it currently being offered online, or um, like, what is the planning for the winter term? Sure. Um, so let me scroll up to the top again because um, I was right at the bottom of the page. Um, so I think there are new questions coming up now. Okay. So uh, let me just. Is the language program online? Is it in the form of formal education? So Siri, our language programs, we are now giving options to students to study online or on campus. It's entirely up to you to decide if you want to study online, because right now there are some students and parents, they are not comfortable with coming to a different country and studying there. So for those students, we have the option for you to do the program online while being in Turkey. Um, on the other hand, if you are someone that is OK, you're vaccinated and you think you are welcome and you want to come and travel, and study here on the campus, then we do have programs starting on campus as well. So you're welcome to join in the programs on campus. And we have many different programs. So I'm not sure which type of a language program what you, you're looking for, but let's say you're you're just looking to improve your English um, and you know you don't have any specific aims about going into a particular degree, then you can explore our academic program, for example, one to nine levels, and then you know. You can just study one level or multiple levels, depending on whatever your aims are. If you're looking for a short term program uh, just to get more Canadian experience, acculturation, learn more about the culture in Toronto as a city and York as a university and just improve your English at the same time. Maybe you can look at our immersion programs, which are the short programs, a few weeks only in Canada and then great programs for you to look at as well. OK, so Arman's got a question in experience, work and diploma note and providing the university internship effectively for scholarship. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't understand this question, Arman. Um, yeah, I'm trying to understand the question. Unfortunately, I don't I don't understand your question, but I think if you're referring to work experience uh, and providing the university internship effectively, yeah, I. I mean, with the postgraduate certificate program that we offer, um, you don't really get a scholarship. The tuition fees is already quite low for these programs. And you can check this and compare it with other institutions. We are actually one of the lowest and but we are, uh, you know, it's really good value for money. So there's no scholarships available for postgraduate certificate students. However, uh, Rachel shared with you some basic information about the undergraduate uh, scholarships and stuff. So you're welcome to check on the York University website uh, for more details about the undergraduate scholarships. And I guess with the internship parts, uh, maybe Rachel can answer more upon the uh, work work opportunities for students like placements and stuff in the undergraduate degrees. Uh, yeah, so um, at your university, we're very big on hands on experiential education. So that means we offer a lot of like um, opportunities outside the classroom, uh, such as, you know, depending on the program that you're studying. So we have like co-ops, internships, placement, and we also have like on campus jobs available uh, throughout the academic year uh, for students access. So whether you're an international student or domestic student, you will have access to those resources. Uh, but if you are referring to, you know, graduate program, then I'm not sure whether, whether there will be any um, like internships or co-ops. So I guess that will really depend on the program. But yeah, I will, I'm only able to comment on the undergraduate program and also for the scholarship as well. Um, so the scholarships available for undergraduate students are only available to students that are applying directly from high school. So if you are a university or college transfer student, a mature student, then you won't be eligible to apply for the scholarship for undergrads. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Rachel, for answering that question. Um, so just the last couple of questions. Arman's asking about assistantship programs in university. Uh, again, I think you're asking about graduate studies, so you'll have to contact Aileen for that. Um, how much time can we do part time work? Um, you're allowed to work up to 20 hours if you're a full time student. Um, and of course, while you're on vacation, it could be a few more hours. So please check on the immigration links, the website that we provided, and you'll find more information there. Is there a requirement PCR test negative or vaccination? Uh, yes, there is a requirement. Of course, uh, you're supposed to quarantine if you're not a vaccinated traveler. So um, please make sure you check the requirements by the Canadian government as well as by the institution to make sure that you're aware of the exact requirements to be able to come and study on campus. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for all your questions and you know uh, for attending this session with us. And uh, just one last time, I'm going to put down my email ID here for those that have maybe just joined now or missed out on that previously. 
so that you can get in touch with me. Um, and Rachel, if I could kindly request you to just put yours too, uh, in case someone's... Okay, so it's a pleasure um, having attended this event with you guys. And I wish you guys uh, have a restful and a good evening. And please do get in touch with us if you have any further questions. Um, is Zainab here? May I pass it to Zainab or, or Rachel if you have any other comments to add? You know, you're welcome to. Yes, thank you very much for your great presentation, Bashar and Rachel. It was a really informative webinar and we had a lot of questions. You covered them all. Thank you for your answers too. So pleasure and uh, thank you for having us. Uh, also, thank you I would so like to thank the participants in Turkish as well. Katıldığınız için teşekkür ederiz arkadaşlar. York University ile ilgili diğer sorularınız için chat kısmında paylaşılmış olan mail adreslerinden iletişime geçebilirsiniz. Aynı zamanda linkleri de incelemeniz faydalı olacaktır. Umarız sizin için de faydalı bir webinar olmuştur. Yarınki webinarlarımızda görüşmek üzere. Thank you very much again you guys. It was a pleasure to have you in IFT Talks. Thank you. Have a good day ahead. Take care. Bye bye. Bye.